I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad and grateful to God for this opportunity to bring God's word to you. Now, before we go on, let's call for that daily bread. Are you ready? Are you ready to receive something today? I want you to smile first. <laughs> Praise God. Smile. Yeah. And then say this to me. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we all know you, for you are bringing your truth strong in our hearts. And we walk in obedience with every instruction you give to us, that we may be blessed. Thank you, Father. I declare right now every burden is lifted, and everyone watching and listening to me, and every yoke is destroyed right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, I heard the Lord say this to me. In this month of November, your star is going to shine. Yeah. Your star is going to shine. Your star is going to shine. I want you to say it with me. Say, say November, my star will shine. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise God, praise God. Now, I was telling you something yesterday. Now, we, we have to finish this this week. You know? So, we have today and tomorrow, and then we go into something else. Now, I know we can exhaust it completely, but you've gotten enough to set you on a journey. We started by working on your mindset. Now, I'm talking to you about the practical steps. Listen, the Word of God is practicable. It's not just something we just... Mm, Word, word. Until you find a place to apply the things you hear, you have not received the word of God yet. How you know you have received? See, it might be given, but doesn't mean you've received it. You know you have received when you find a place to apply it. That's the truth. So, I'm sharing some practical things with you now that you can go and do. I'm not just telling you something to sit down and nod your head. I'm telling you what to do. Take your tithes. Go before the Lord. Lord, who should I give this to? And any time you tithe, that's what you're supposed to do. Now, you know, working these things out, I've, I've, I've seen many, many testimonies many testimonies we we're actually working on documenting some of these um, testimonies because there's something the lord is commanding us to do with them so so if, if you're listening to me you've been practicing this and you've been you've been having testimony now testimonies in the giving and then testimonies in the receiving we, we would like to hear from you so so we'll take your own testimony also praise god now so you ask the Lord, what should I do with this? And then he will command you, give it to so and so. I said, well, how do I know it's God that's talking, telling me that? I'll tell you, it's very simple. Father, who, who should I give this money to? It's your money. You're the one to tell me how to spend it. So, my own is to honor you with it. Yours is to give, it, give the instruction. He said, when he gives you the instruction concerning it, he has received it. So you ask, does God receive our tithe? Yes, he does. So why tithe? I'll tell you why. Because it is his. But everything belongs to him, yes. But you see, he, the things he has given to you, he's giving you the will over them. You have authority over them. But concerning the tithe, he gave a command that of every money you have, you can spend how you like. But the tenth, the tithe of it, you can't spend it anyhow. You 
must give it to me. Now, you don't give it to him by going to drop it on one altar. No, except he commands you to give it there. You give it to him by listening for his instruction. And, and no one needs to hear God for you where this is concerned. You should hear God yourself. I told you yesterday, if you don't hear the voice of God, then you have a big problem that we need to solve. But the truth about it is, it is not that God doesn't speak to you. You don't have a hearing problem. You have an understanding problem. It is you that have not realized yet that this is God talking to you because if it's speaking, God speaks and he's been speaking to you. So you go before the Lord and say, Lord, here's your money. What should I do with it? And then you just hear the Lord say, give it to Susan. Or, or you just finish praying and then you are waiting. Maybe you're not hearing anything, but wait. Wait. Understand you have made a request. You see, when you go to an ATM machine and you slot in your card, put in your, your pin and give the commands you need to give, what do you do afterwards? You wait. You don't just finish punching all those keys and then you just walk away. You wait. What are you waiting for? A response from the machine. It may take a few seconds, sometimes even up to one minute. And then your money comes out. Now, if you walk away, the money may come out. And someone will call it its place. So when you pray, know that you have prayed. Why are you waiting for that machine? Because you gave some right instructions. So when you pray and ask God, wait. And you're watching. Now, at that moment, now when I mean at that moment, that day or that that. That time you prayed, or minutes after, hours after, but that, and you see, your spirit will get this. You may not hear a voice, you may, but you see, I'm trying to share different scenarios now. Scenarios now. You may not hear a voice saying, Give this person the money. Help me, sir. Now, you just finished praying, and, and suddenly, someone's name just starts coming to your heart, you know. Chinedu, Chinedu, your friend, Chinedu, your friend, Chinedu, your friend. You wonder, why am I thinking of Chinedu? Or a pastor, right? Or that pastor. You see, it will come. It will come as a line of reasoning. Sometimes that's, that's what happens to you. See, my mind was telling me, that's what you say. But not your mind I was telling you, it's God I was speaking to you. My mind was telling me, you know, there's this pastor that, I don't know, it just come into my mind that I should give him the money. It's not coming to your mind. The Lord was talking to you. Now, what do you do? Okay, I'm not sure. Father, it's been coming to my spirit to give in this person. Is that what you want? Can you just give me a confirmation and I'll do it? Don't be afraid to ask God for confirmation. You will be amazed that person, if a person has your contact, that person will just call you. Or you will be amazed, someone else will just call you. Maybe you don't even have that person's call. Someone will just call and say, hey, how nice is everything? Oh, fine. Do you know I was speaking with a um, so, 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 so person? Like, oh, okay. Oh, you have his number? Yes, I do. Please, can you give me his number? You see, whoever the Lord tells you to give it to, he will connect you with the person. Yeah, he will. So, because you were expectant that you have prayed, or someone will just come and say, ah, do you know, so so person, ah, I was in need. And you can even go and say, sorry, how much will take care of that situation? Oh, the person, I think I even spoke to the person, he needs this amount of money. And you just realized that that was exactly the tight that you were asking the Lord about. Now, what, what do you think that is? So you see why I said, the problem is not God speaking. The problem is you recognizing that this is God. You're like, whoa. And I said, what a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. It's arranged. So you see that God has made the way. Then obey him. Say, Lord, thank you. I get it now. This is you. I get it now. And I will obey you. And then you take that tithe and send it to the person. You don't have to tell the person, this is my tithe I'm sending to you. No, not necessary. 
You may if you just want to for teaching purpose or for you know, but but you see, when you are giving into that person, it's no longer tight. You are just giving the person money as a messenger from the Lord. You understand what I'm talking about? Like like when you save money in the bank now, and then you put, let's say, you put a million naira in your bank account, and then you're leaving the bank, and someone else goes in to withdraw money, and it's you see the person they are giving the person. If someone goes in to withdraw one million naira. And then they give the person one million. And they say, ah, why are you giving this? I came to save my one million in the bank. Why are you giving it to this person? No, you can't give it to I brought my money. <laughs> oh, it's not your money they are giving to the person. See? So it's the same thing. We take our tithes to the Lord. Where tithe is between us and God. Do you understand that? Now, when he commands you who to give it to, he is now giving you money for that person. He is not giving that person tithe. God does not give tithe. Understand what I'm talking about. He is giving his child, one of his child, money. But you paid your tithe to the Lord. So get it, get it. Well, then if you feel like oh, God says I should give him my tithe, it's not a problem. Get what I'm saying. And then you obey. That money gets to that person. And the person is excited, he shares his testimony. Guess what? This was exactly the money I was believing God for. Or we, we, we came to this need and, and, and God just had to do this and now he used it to, whoa, praise God. Now what's that to you? My money has entered into God's hand. What happens next? Of course, listen, go and sleep. Why? Because you have just entered into God's financial system. And in that financial system, God, you, you've heard preachers say, Titan is insurance. You've heard people say that. Very true. Very true. Because now, now what, what's been lacking, so but I've been tightening, what's been lacking has, has simply been this. You have not been tithing properly. Now that's what I'm sharing with you. So I, you, I'm using tithe because number one, it is not your money. It's tithe is not free will giving. It is God's money. It is God's money. If you don't give it, you are stealing from God. And God is going to take charge. He will deal with you. Whether it's, he will deal with you. Some say we all pay tithe, whether willingly or willing. That's not what I'm talking about. If you don't tithe, you are stealing. You are stealing what is God. Now, this is how bad the stealing is. Because you don't give to God. Now, you understand when God says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse so that there will be meat in my house. He wasn't talking about a physical church. Now, understand this. When, when, when people ask God for things. Now, hear me. God is going to ask. He's going to supply that need from the resources that he's got available where? On the earth. Angel will not bring money back. Bullion vans don't move from heaven to earth. But God who commanded us to bring a tenth of everything he blesses us from, he did that out of his wisdom. Now, it is based on that he can give us command God will not give you command. He is not a thief. He is not going to steal what belongs to you. He will only request, please, can you give this person this money? I'll pay you back. Now, that's when it's not tight. And I told you before, when it gets to that point where God has to tell you to give out of your own substance, it means someone is disobeying God where tight in his concern. Now, that's why there's so much corruption in the body of Christ in the earth. Why? Because we're not tightened properly. So there's a shortage. You see why God will judge you? Because you are causing shortage in the storehouse. You are here. Someone is asking God for school fees. You are here. Someone is asking God for house rent. And you bring your tithe before the Lord. And, and what are you doing? You are making the storehouse rich. And God commands, give it to so so and so person. I've shared with you. You know, whoever God commands, you know, that's the funny thing. When God begins to command you that, you, you, you don't, if God says give it to that person, you go give it to the person. Whatever the person does with it is none of your business. But you know, I heard God say I should give it to that person. 
and I've obeyed. Now you start with this, listen to me. You know, David said it in, in, in Psalm 1, 127 and verse 2. He said, God gives blessings to his beloved in their sleep. That's why I said earlier, when you do this, you can go and sleep. But you see, why should you go and sleep? Because see, you have just been, you have just confirmed to yourself that God knows you, he receives from you, that means he will surely give to you. Even if you lose your job the next day, I, I'm telling you this, don't be bothered. Why do I say don't be bothered? Don't be thinking, what do I do now? No, 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 no. As long as you have given tight and you know God receives it, I'm telling you this, literally you can go and sleep. Father, we honor you today. Your word is true. And we obey and receive it. Confirm your word with signs following today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now don't miss this evening's meeting by 6 o'clock. I'm going to be sharing more on this. God bless you. Bye.